The XLOOKUP function has been making Excel users very excited since it was introduced in 2019, and in this video, I will discuss the great big changes that XLOOKUP has brought along, as well as the pros and cons of XLOOKUP, and of course, I'll show you many examples to demonstrate how this one function has replaced other lookup functions like the VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and the combo functions of index match. So let's dive right in. Now instead of first talking about XLOOKUP and then show you examples, I'll reverse it this time. I'll start with examples, and these examples will reveal so much about this great function. So without further ado, let's just start with the first example to show you what the fuss is all about. I'll click on the cell where I want to display my result. Then I type an equal sign to signal to Excel that I'm starting a formula. Then I type XL, and immediately I see the XLOOKUP function. Now, if you don't see the XLOOKUP function as an option on your computer, as you see here, then that means you're not using Office 365. You see, XLOOKUP is only available to Office 365 subscribers. Even if you have Office 2019, XLOOKUP will still not be there. So if you want to have the XLOOKUP function available in your Excel application, please make sure you subscribe to Office 365. And since we're talking about availability, XLOOKUP is not backward compatible. This means if you have Office 365 and you create an Excel file with an XLOOKUP function and then send this file to a friend or a colleague at work who doesn't have Office 365, then your file will not fully work on this person's computer. Why? Because again, XLOOKUP is not backward compatible. All right, so let's continue with the XLOOKUP function. From where I left off moments ago, I'll hit the tab key on my keyboard, which brings up the function and its arguments. From here, you can see that XLOOKUP function takes six arguments. Now for some of you, this might seem intimidating at first and even scary, but the good news is that only the first three arguments are required, while the last three arguments are optional. Now the first required argument is the lookup value, followed by the lookup array, and finally the return array. For my lookup value, I'll choose this name pull down list. Then I'll type a comma to move to my next argument, which is the lookup array. The lookup array simply means where is this lookup value found? And so I highlight the name cells because my lookup value is one of these cells. Then I type a comma. And now I need to choose my return array. The return array simply means where is the answer found. And so if I want to return a hobby, then I simply highlight the hobby cells like this. And technically, I'm actually done with the XLOOKUP function. So I can just hit enter on my keyboard. I now see the correct hobby for the name I chose in my pull down list. If I change this name value to another name, my XLOOKUP result will update accordingly as well. So by just using three straightforward arguments, I was able to write a quick and simple lookup function. Now the XLOOKUP function can look up values in columns or rows. The example I just showed you did a lookup on columns, but it can equally well do a lookup on rows. Let's go to the second sheet. It's a small sample sheet of the revenue and cost for a given month. And right below that, I have the months in a pull-down list. And I entered revenue and cost in these two cells so I can display their results using the XLOOKUP function in a horizontal way. So I'll start with looking up the revenue. I'll type the equal sign, then Excel, followed by a tab on my keyboard. Then for my first argument, I'll select this pull-down list for my lookup value, which contains the months. Then I type a comma, and for my lookup array, I'll highlight all my months row. And so you can now see that I've highlighted rows for my array and not columns, as in my previous example. Then I'll type a comma, and for my return array, I'll select the revenue row, since for this example, that's what I want to return, a revenue value. And notice once again, I've highlighted a row, not a column. Then I just hit enter. I just looked up the revenue value for the month of March. Now I can easily change the month using this pull down list, say to August. And now I see the August revenue is displayed. 
And now let's run quickly through the same xlookup function, but this time for cost. I'll type an equal sign followed by xl, then I hit tab, and for my lookup value, I'll just choose the pull down list, then comma, then for my lookup array, I'll choose the row that contains my months, then I type comma, then for my return array, I'll choose the row that contains my cost. And since I'm done, I hit enter, and now I see the cost value for the month of August. So to quickly analyze what I just did with these two last examples, and the one example from the first sheet, I use XLOOKUP to look up in both the horizontal and vertical directions. And this means that XLOOKUP has replaced both the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions with just one all-inclusive function. Pretty neat stuff, right? Okay, let me show you another powerful feature of XLOOKUP. Just like XLOOKUP can look up vertically and horizontally, it can also look up to the right or left. For example, I can use the name column to look up the H, which is a left lookup. Or I can use the ID column to look up the height, which is a right lookup. So once again, XLOOKUP is demonstrating how powerful and flexible it can be. Let me show you an example of each directional lookup. I'll type an equal sign, followed by X and L, then tab on my keyboard. For my lookup value, I'll choose the name pull down list, then I'll type a comma, and for my lookup array, I'll select the name cells. And for my return array, I'll select the eight cells. And then I can just hit enter So this was an example of a left lookup because the return array was on the left side of the lookup array. And now here's an example of a right lookup. I'll type an equal sign, followed by Excel, then tab on my keyboard. And for my lookup value, I'll choose the ID pull down list. Then I'll type a comma. And for my lookup array, I'll select the ID cells. And for my return array, I'll select the height cells, and then I just hit enter. Now all the examples so far have been using just one lookup criteria. For example, I just used the name to return the H, or I used the ID to return the height. What about if I want to do a two-dimensional lookup, which means I use two lookup criteria, one from a column and one from a row, and where they meet, that specific cross-section is my answer. Let me show you an example. I'll come here, type an equal sign, followed by an Excel, then tab. Then for my lookup value, I'll choose this name pull down list, followed by a comma. Then for my lookup array, I'll choose the name cells. Now for my return array, I will nest another X lookup function which means I'll use an XLOOKUP function inside an XLOOKUP function, like this. I'll type Excel, then tab, and for this lookup value, I'll choose this pull-down list, which holds my column headers. And for my lookup array, I'll highlight the header row, then a comma, and for my return array, I'll highlight all this data since my answer can be anywhere here, which is the cross-section of the names and the column headers. And since I'm done, I can just hit enter. I can now change the name and my lookup result will change accordingly. I can change the second criteria. And again, my lookup result will also change. So these examples show the XLOOKUP function in its simplest form using only the first three arguments. Now let's start talking about the three optional arguments in the XLOOKUP function. I'll show you the arguments again. So as you can see, the fourth argument is an if not found argument. This will allow us to display a custom text message when the lookup value is not found. If you remember in other lookup functions, 
we either got an annoying uh, pound NA error or a workaround back then was to wrap up the entire lookup function in the if error function, which was a bit messy. However, with xlookup, this feature is now easily included as an argument. Again, pretty neat stuff. So for example, if I start an xlookup function here, and for my lookup value, I'll make up a number that doesn't exist on purpose in my ID cells. For example, let's type 2500. Then I'll type a comma. Then I'll highlight the ID cells for my lookup array. And then a comma. And then I'll highlight the name cells for my return array. Now when I hit enter, I get the default error of pound NA. But if I go back to my formula and add the fourth optional argument by first typing a comma, now it's asking me for the if not found message. So let's make the message, let's say, oops, value not found. Now, since I'm done, I can hit enter. And since 2500 is not found in my ID column, I get the more descriptive, oops, value not found error message. You can of course customize the if not found argument to say anything you want, but now you can see how simple this fourth argument is in the xlookup function. All right, let's move on to the second optional argument, which is the match mode argument. If you remember from the previous videos I did on lookups, like the VLOOKUP or the index and match videos, there was an argument to specify if the lookup is an exact match or an approximate match. And although most of the time the lookups that people usually look up are exact matches, all the lookup functions before the xlookup function came along, they all defaulted to approximate match. So this meant that every time I wrote a lookup formula where I wanted an exact match, which again was most of the time, I had to specify this extra argument and change the default value of approximate match to be exact match. And in my humble opinion, the approximate match was really an odd default option, but that's how Excel had it set up for the lookup functions. But this all changed finally with xlookup, because as you can see here, the default match mode is now exact match. So I can either type a zero in its value, or I can just leave it blank and basically end the formula now or I can then move on to the next and final argument. But before I move on to the final argument, I wanna show you a newly added option in the match mode, which is the wildcard. Say for example, you know you want to look up the name Jennifer, but you don't know how it's spelled. I mean, if it's with just one N or if it's spelled Jenny instead of the full Jennifer. So we can use a wildcard like this. Let's start a new formula. I'll type Excel, then tab. And here's where I can write the wildcard. Since I know the name is a string value, I'll wrap it with double quotes. Then I'll type J E N, then an asterisk and close the double quotes. What this means is that I want to look up the name that starts with J E N and then anything after that doesn't matter. So the asterisk is the wildcard symbol. Then I will type a comma, and from my lookup array, I'll select the name cells, then comma, and from my return array, I'll choose the hobby cells, and for the if not found argument, I'll type not found, then comma, then for the match mode, I'll choose the last option, which is the wildcard. Then I'll hit enter, since the last argument is not needed because it's optional. So as you can see, we get the results as kayaking, which is the correct hobby for Jennifer. So this means that our wildcard match worked correctly. So how cool is that? All right, so we have one more optional argument to cover, and that is the search mode. Let me write out a blank xlookup function to show you the available options in the search mode argument. And as you can see, there are four search mode options. 
The default option is to search first to last, then an option to search in reverse order, which means to search last to first, and the last two options will be covered in a separate video. But these options require that the data be ordered in either ascending order or descending order. Now, if you look at my table here, you will notice that I have the name Jack listed twice. I made this simple example on purpose to demonstrate the search mode example. So let's pretend that the first Jack is Jack Jr., who likes to play soccer, and is the 10-year-old son of Jack Sr. And so Jack Sr. is the last name on our list, and he is 45 years old, and he likes to ski. Now that we've established these made up facts, let's dive right into an XLOOKUP function. I'll click in the cell where I want to display my results. Then I'll type an equal sign, then XL, then tab, and I'll type Jack for my lookup value and wrap it up in quotes. Then I'll type a comma, then select the name cells, then comma, then for my return array, I'll select the age cells. Then I'll type a comma, and for the if not uh, found argument, I'll skip it, so I'll leave it blank. Then for my match mode, I'll also skip it as I want the default value, which is exact match. And then for the search mode, I'll also leave it blank for this first example, so I want to use the default search mode of first to last. And before I hit enter, can you guess which Jack H will be returned? Is it the first or is it the last? Well, I'll hit enter, and as you can see, we got 10. Why? Well, because the default search mode was first to last. And so this was the first instance of Jack in our table, or in our results array. Now let me return to my formula, and this time, I'll modify the search mode to the second option, which is last to first. And when I hit enter, I get Jack Sr.'s age, which is 45. So these were just two quick examples of how we can use the search mode in the XLOOKUP function. So if I would list all the benefits of the XLOOKUP function, I would say that it works in both the vertical and horizontal directions, which eliminates the need for VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. It can also look up in the right or left directions because it uses a separate lookup array and a separate return array, which eliminates the need for the choose function, the helper columns, or even the workaround of using the index match function combination. Another benefit is that XLOOKUP function can do two dimensional lookups where we find a cross section of a column and row. It also can run just fine most of the times with only three arguments as the three other optional arguments are defaulted to good options like the exact match and search first to last. And the first optional argument, the if not found, is a great built-in argument which avoids the need to wrap up the entire XLOOKUP function in an if error function. Also, there is now a wild card option in the match mode which is a powerful way to look up items where we are not sure about. And finally, the search mode allows us to look up in both the first to last and last to first order. So as you can see overall, the XLOOKUP function is a very inclusive and powerful function that can do so much for us. Now if I would be bias free and pick a con or a drawback or a disadvantage to go with the list of uh, benefits that I just talked about, I would have to say that it's the two-dimensional lookup in XLOOKUP. You see, to do a two-dimensional lookup in XLOOKUP, I showed you that we have to nest an XLOOKUP inside another XLOOKUP function. Before XLOOKUP came along, and when we wanted to do two-dimensional lookups, we used the index function, and then we nested two match functions inside the index function. So XLOOKUP is still easier and better than other functions, but I personally don't like to nest functions as it creates great room for error. Anyways, I'll leave you with a couple of fun questions and I hope you can leave your answers for me in the comments below. Do you think XLOOKUP is worth all the hype and excitement? 
If so, please share what you believe is the best feature of XLOOKUP. And do you think the switch from the iconic VLOOKUP function to XLOOKUP will be a smooth one? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll be seeing you in another video as well. Take care, and bye for now.